All right, so now we need to create some scenes in order to uh, present our, our 3D SketchUp model in a 2D layout program. So uh, where do we start here? So first off, we, we should probably do a uh, interior perspective scene. That would be a good way to describe our, our uh, building here. So with all of my layers on, I'm just going to go in here and kind of set myself in the model at a 5 foot 6 eye height. And if I look around, you can see uh, my ceiling. Uh, let's do this. Let's intersect our faces with model. And then uh, this way we can just pull up our, our ceiling out of here. So we'll get those broken apart. And let's do that. Delete those. Fill in that. All right, so now we have, this is our ceiling that we actually want. So let me just pull that apart here. And what I'm going to do is paste that back in place. And we're going to call that our uh, ceiling architectural ceilings and then I'm going to paint that we'll just use the default uh, material for now just to have it look somewhat like a ceiling okay so there's our roof and we don't need that piece on there anymore we don't need any of these and we don't need any of that so we have our, our roof separate from our ceiling now okay so let's get back to the task at hand we're gonna set ourselves in here and we have one more cleanup to do so if we want to set up a, a 3D perspective drawing, uh, we don't want to see these lines where, we'll go back to our design, we don't want to see these lines where our interior walls meet our exterior walls. But the problem is that they're necessary because in order to have these surfaces, we have to have those lines. So that's where another conceptual layer comes into play. I'm going to assign this edge to our always off and I'm gonna assign this edge to always off and always off is typically always off so that way we we are able to hide that now on this one I want that side to be on always off and then for this part I don't want to assign the entire edge to my always off layer I only want to assign this top part so you see how I draw a line on top of it to break that edge and now I can assign that to always off all right, so now that's that's another example of a conceptual layer and how we use those to um, just make the, the 3D model do what we want it to do. So uh, definitely comes into play too with construction documents. Okay, so now uh, this interior scene, I go to my 3D perspective view. And a uh, problem with 3D perspective like this when you're inside is oftentimes the ceiling is so gray so the way you get around that is you use sun for shading, turn your shadows off, and set your lightness to zero and your darkness to 100. That really brightens things up, but sometimes a little bit too much. So then you can just kind of come down a little bit off of 100. So let's maybe say 75. All right, so now our first scene is going to be our perspective scene. So let's look at those. We have our scene 14. We want to make sure that we're saving all of our properties. And we're going to call this uh, layout, LO underscore uh, perspective one. And hit enter, and that locks it in. So we've got our first scene that's saving all the properties. And again, the SketchUp workflow for architecture in that book, complete explanation of not only scenes, but also how layers and styles can be applied to scenes. So if you go through the exercises in there, you will become uh, truly a pro at layer scenes and styles. All right, so now we want to have another interior view. So maybe we'll just come over here in the kitchen and kind of back up a little bit. And I kind of put myself inside the wall there. All right, so we'll set our eye height at 66. And we're just going to add another scene. And we're going to call this one LO underscore perspective 2. All right, so now we can always go to perspective 1 and perspective 2. So let's go ahead and save this again. All right, so perspective scenes are are pretty easy. Those are um, those are those are pretty straightforward because there's not a whole lot happening as far as um, uh, compiling drawings and and all that. So uh, let's now move on to our elevations. So typically elevations 
I want those to be on the 2D drawing type style, like this black and white CAD output. You can definitely use color. There's no problem with that. But I just find that most uh, most contractors or uh, most architectural drawings are just they should just be in black and white. That's kind of a uh, standard for cost effective too for printing. Okay, so we're on our 2D drawing scene, and what I like to do is just right click on the surface that I want to take the elevation of, and choose Align View, and then Camera Parallel Projection, and let's see, let's go to our uh, shadow settings and maybe adjust those a little bit, so it's not so so strong I guess something like that looks good and we can zoom in a little bit and we'll add a scene there I just right click on the tab and you can also hit this button here but uh, we're gonna call this one LO underscore elevation front always important to make sure that all of your properties to save are checked on that way you can bounce from perspective one two and your front elevation all right then let's add another scene on the side Again, I just double click into my, my container, right click on that surface and choose a line view. All right, now we gotta adjust our shadows again for this one. We don't need fog, but uh, shadows, we can adjust something like, I think that looks pretty good. We'll add another scene. And in our scenes dialog, we're gonna call this one LO underscore elevation side. Let's keep it generic for now. I always prefix any scene that I'm going to use in the layout with LO. That way, uh, and I also keep them towards the bottom of this list or to the right of all of my utility scenes. That way it makes it easy to find and I, I can, if I have a lot of scenes, it's easy to sift through them and, and find what I'm looking for. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got perspective one, two, our front elevation, and our side elevation. So. Uh, we've been using different styles. You can see that we have our line drawing style for this one, and we have like a, a presentation style here. You could also use uh, really any presentation type. I just I like to use this one that's kind of sketchy for demonstrating because it's obviously different. And typically, when a design is is a pretty rough stage, it looks better when it's got a sketchy style. Okay. All right. So now next, we need to make some plans. Now plans start to get a little bit tricky because the way that you control line weights when you're using this system is by stacking viewports in the layout. So we need to create a scene for heavy line weights, a scene for light line weights, and then we're going to create another scene for hatch. So uh, let's see. So what we're going to do first is uh, we can just turn off our shadows because we don't want our shadows turned on in plan. We have all of our layers turned on, so we just make sure that's the case there. Uh, and actually, when you're creating these scenes, uh, which this is, again, completely explained in the book, there's these uh, scene organization diagrams that really explain exactly every piece of uh, the style, um, the, the view, the layers that you need. Makes it very, very easy to, to set up uh, all of your plans and reflected ceiling plans and things. So uh, well documented in the book and also further explained on SketchupExchange.com. All right, so I find that a lot of times it's easier to turn uh, turn everything off. Uh, and you know, I'm sorry. Let's just add our section cut. We'll go like this, and I'm just going to add it right in the middle of our windows. And then I'm going to right click on my section plane, choose Align View, and kind of get my view set up. Okay, so now what I want to do is turn off all of my layers. And that makes it easier. It's an additive versus subtractive. It's easier to turn on what I need. So for this first one, we're going to use our walls. And notice that nothing turned on yet because I have another switch. I have interior and exterior. All right, so this is going to be my heavy viewport. So I'll go to my scenes and go ahead and select this and add one called LO underscore plan heavy. All right, so there's our heavy plan. Now, I'm going to go back to all off, and we want to turn on our doors, our uh, 2D graphic. Then you're going to see your door pop up there. We also want windows, and we could probably turn on equipment, fixtures, and I think that's good for now. Even though we're not using those layers, we might want to add in our, our kitchen equipment and our bathroom fixtures, and that way they will come on on the lighter line weight. So then we'll go over here and 
add another scene and call this one LO underscore plan light. All right, so now we have our, oh, we kind of messed up here. So this one, um, that happens when you click in uh, the name of one scene and then click on a scene, click in the name. So let's just fix that, LO plan uh, heavy. Okay, so now we have our heavy plan, our light plan, and uh, make sure that our section planes, we're not seeing those, and that's a property of style, so we're all good there. Okay, so we have a heavy heavy viewport, and imagine that if you took this drawing and put it and put this drawing on top of it, you're gonna get a complete floor plan. So now we need one more plan. We're going to add another scene, um, and this one, we wanna hatch our exterior walls. So now this is one thing about my system that's really, really exceptional and unique is that I have come up with a way to create dynamic hatches, any pattern you want. You can use vector fills, you can use line hatches, really any repeating pattern image um, can be used as a hatch. So what we do is we go to our heavy plan and for this one, we only want our exterior turned on. So we'll turn off our interior. And then let's look at our styles. So here we have our vector fill. So we can do that. And you notice that it fills in the whole thing. And that's okay. I'm going to show you why when we get to layout. So we have our vector fills. And we also have, this is uh, something I just figured out. We can use dots. We can use lines. And we can use uh, like a net. So I, I created a couple of these hatches. Probably the most common one are these lines. And um, if you look at how this is set up, uh, the lines, it's using watermarks as a, as a, uh, a mask. And so uh, really slick the way this works and to create any hatch pattern dynamic. And by dynamic, I mean that this hatch, when I move a wall, it's going to move in layout, and uh, the wall is going to move, the hatch is going to move. There's going to be no re recreating work once I get in the layout. Okay, so now uh, we'll go to our scenes, and let's add a scene, and I like to move that one to the bottom and call this LO underscore plan hatch. Hit enter, and let's just save this just to be sure. Okay, so now we have all of our scenes set up. We have perspective one, two, our front elevation, our side elevation, heavy line weight, light line weight, and our hatch. So if I want to get back to a, a place where I can design, I can click on design and all on, and then orbit into 3D. And uh, typically I'll just hide this. So uh, we'll also throw this back into our perspective view. Okay, so we, we've saved our, our SketchUp model. We've, we've designed our, our cabin. We've organized our model. We've set up our scenes. We're ready to send this thing to layout and start compiling our, our documents there.